thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I'm going to read you a very brief story. It's only about uh, five paragraphs. You know, uh, all the uh, scolding and warning I do, uh, well, that's uh, all well and good. But uh, here's an actual news story that will uh, pretty much uh, cement in your mind, if you're thinking of doing this, why it's a bad idea to do it. I get this call all the time. I mean, I get dozens, if not hundreds of guys, if you if you look over the course of a year. Who, who tell me they think this would be a good idea and they ask me what I think and they want me to put my rubber stamp on it. And I never ever do. Here is the story. This is from the Associated Press. Dateline Los Angeles. A man who married a Russian woman so she could obtain U.S. immigration status and stay in the country was sentenced to two months in federal prison. Benjamin Claude Adams, 30, apologized to U.S. District Court Judge John Walter at his sentencing. He said, I'm painfully and regretfully sorry that I committed this crime. Adams pleaded guilty in January to two felony charges of marriage fraud and making a false statement. Prosecutors, by the way, listen to the brains involved in this operation. Prosecutors said he married Yulia, 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 okay, Yulia Mikhailovna. He couldn't even pronounce her name, but he, he married her anyway. Would love to have seen the minister at their wedding. Do you, Benjamin Claude Adams, take you this Russian chick to be your lawfully wedded wife? Yes, he married her a month. She's 25 years old, by the way. A month after he responded to an online ad on, guess where, folks? Craigslist. The ad offered prospective husbands up to $15,000 to marry her. Later, I guess she had a third name, Kalanina. <laughs> Leased a new Ford Mustang for Adams, a U.S. citizen, as payment for the marriage, prosecutors said. Kalinina was convicted in February of marriage fraud after a one-day trial at which she admitted to posting the ad, which cast the arrangement as a green card marriage. She faces up to five years in federal prison when sentenced on April 28th. And you know what happens after that? <laughs> after five years in our federal prison system, she'd go back to Russia. That's right. Now, you boys, I don't understand this. You boys are constantly calling in here and asking me this question. We have a diverse community here in Southern California. And uh, we've got people who are naturalized citizens. We've got people who are... Um, legal residents of the United States, and we've got plenty of illegal uh, uh, residents who, by the way, don't just come from Mexico. They come from all around the world. I have met illegal aliens from uh, not just Mexico or El Salvador. I have met them from places like England, like Canada, Australia, plenty of countries. Oh, yeah, Italy. I met a guy from Italy. Illegal alien. And uh, I'm sure there are plenty of Russian illegal aliens, too. Sure of it. 
So you boys keep calling in and saying, what do you think, Tom? She offered me ten grand. Should I do this? What do you think? Are you guys crazy? Are you crazy? You're the same morons who are selling your sperm. And I've been telling you, don't sell your sperm, right? You're the same idiots who are doing that. You know, how about you just work hard? How about you get a good job? How about you get an education? How about you bust your ass doing an honest day's work? And you make your money that way. Anybody who would marry somebody to help them get a green card... And and, and, and and the idea being you would get compensated for it is just a loser. I mean, uh, yeah, have I ever had sex with an illegal alien? You bet. Absolutely. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's very fertile ground. <laughs> for some people, it's fertile ground in more ways than one. Yes, of course. Many illegal aliens will have sex with you, and then ho they're hoping that after you've sampled the merchandise, uh, you know, that you'll buy it by signing the marital contract. But, uh, you know, come on. <laughs> the, 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 you, uh, yeah, it's one thing, but by the way, it's one thing to marry somebody, you fell in love with somebody from another country, you helped them become a citizen because you fell in love with somebody from another country. All right. And you had to get married because you wanted to keep them in the country. You know what? I'll buy in. That can happen. But here's what I don't buy. You lazy, good-for-nothing morons who, who think five grand or ten grand is worth the risk that this guy took. And for God's sake, he's now a felon. The guy can't vote. He can't own a gun. It's going to be on his record like forever. And he's going to a federal prison for a couple of months. It's just not worth it. So I don't know how many of you are out there, but I suspect, especially in Southern California, where we have so many illegal aliens, I suspect there's an awful lot of you lazy, good-for-nothing morons who took the five or ten grand and married somebody, or look at this one. This guy sold out for such a cheap price. She leased him a Ford Mustang. Leased him a Ford Mustang. Didn't even buy him a Ford Mustang. She leased it for him. you got to be kidding me. Am I wrong? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. When you're just trying to get laid, being a nice guy in any way, that reputation will kill you. It will kill you. Yeah, dig that, dig that. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. Tom like this show at one 800 tom Yeah, but one of you guys, and here it is. Guys getting two months in federal prison. For marrying a chick he met on Craigslist who wanted a green card marriage. Didn't he think anybody else reads Craigslist? Idiot. Idiot. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Jason on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How's it going? Going great. I just want to thank you, Dad. Uh, you saved me a lot of headaches. Um, I was going to um, marry this chick for ten grand right now and five after. She said, hey, you don't have to worry about it. I just need my papers. You just pretty much go to court. And that's it. It sounded like a good idea. I asked a couple of buddies, and I do it. Why not? You clear some credit cards, do a, uh, clear a lot of stuff. You get some money. But then uh, I spoke, I emailed you, and you sent me straight. I looked into it, and it's not worth it. Ten years of she has a kid, so ten years of oh. having that that kid under my my paycheck is not worth it, man. Oh. And by the way, what guys don't understand about these green card marriages, you have to stay married for years. It's not like it used to be. Yeah. Uh, they make you wait. First of all, they make you wait because there is such a backlog of people trying to get citizenship or legal residency. And secondly, they make you wait because they're trying to see if you're really married. And then... 
um, rather than just asking to see your marriage certificate, they ask to see things like your electric bill, to see if both your names are on it, to see if you have a bank account together, to see if you filed your taxes together. They ask for photographs of the two of you on vacation. No, no, it was too much. It was too much. The court dates, I had to live in with her, I had to do a lot. I mean, nope, it's not worth 10 grand. It's not worth my friend. It's not worth my freedom. You know? No. I, I, I couldn't do a lot of stuff if I was married with her or something. Uh-uh. I ain't, I'm just 20. I ain't, I ain't going to stop. <laughs> so now, were you dating this chick? Is that the deal? No, 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 no. This was a, uh, a friend of our family, and she's like, you know what? I need the papers. Um, uh, the work at her asked for papers. They let her go because she didn't have any. So she's trying to find some papers, and she thought I was a sucker for it. And uh, I almost did it. I did did your family it. try to try to pressure you into doing this? You know, they, at first they were. They were like, you know what? You should do it. It's a friend of the family. You're getting money off of it, but then uh, they're like, when I told them what, what was up, they're like, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth doing that. And uh, you know what? You know what, Dad? I have to thank. I have to thank you for that. I would. I saved myself a lot of headaches because of that. Uh, I, I constantly listen to your show, and I just want to know if you can take me out Compton style. I certainly can. Biatch. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Nino. On the Tom Likas show, or is it Nino? Uh, it's Nino. Oh, Nino. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey. We don't well, have a we don't have an Enya on the computer. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, I can't believe this guy went in there for like two years, you know, federal prison. And the thing is, he got it on the cheap. The going price right now is about fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand. Yeah. I have never met anybody who's been offered fifty thousand. Uh, what I generally hear is five or ten or maybe fifteen thousand, but not fifty. Well, it's usually mostly on the um, like Asian communities, uh, Filipinos, you know, Chinese. Yeah, it's fifty thousand um, dollars. I I knew just uh, one friend before. He gave. He told me, oh, "Yeah, I got this one girl. She's gonna offer you like fifty thousand dollars to go marry her." I was thinking about it, but it's like, no, I you know, it's it's dumb. <laughs> Yeah, it's just not worth the risk and, and, and the amount of work you have to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I used to be an immigration paralegal, and so I did that paperwork for those guys. And so uh, I, yeah, you, I'm right about this, am I not? Uh, they, yeah. they, it used to be they just ask for your marriage certificate. Now they want to see your DWP bill. They want to see your phone bill. They want, oh, to, yeah. they want to see your checking account to see if you have checks in both names. They yeah. want to see your mail they want to see photographs of the two of you in Hawaii or under the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, it's, you know, actually they want more photos of you in different places because let's just say they got married to Las Vegas and all they see is Vegas photos, then they're not going to believe you because they know you just got married, like, in a real quick in Vegas. Right. And and the waiting period is actually about five years. There's, like, a three-year transitionary period, and then there are a couple of years to actually, like, all right, this is legit. Are they actually married? <laughs> Right. And uh, do you really want to be setting up a bank account with somebody who can then take all the funds out of it? Do you really want to be uh, telling the electric company that this is uh, your, your, your wife or the, the cable TV company? You could get stuck for bills that those people incur. Exactly. And what if you get the, and what, what, what if you get, well, you will get divorced. You're, she's going to take half of whatever you got. <laughs> That's the other thing guys don't think about is that they're legally entitled to take half of everything you made during that period of time, which will undoubtedly be more than what she's paying you to marry her. Exactly. There's, there's no reason to do it. It's a dumb idea. I don't know why, like, you know, stupid guys do it. <laughs> By the way, even a prenuptial agreement may not stand up. Uh, in a situation like that, and here's why. Because uh, a premarital agreement, uh, a prenuptial agreement, is not supposed to be signed under duress. Mm -hmm. So if someone was facing a deportation and they signed a prenup in order not to be deported, somebody could make a case that that's duress. Yeah, it's just more headaches. And, you know, it, hey, it's your, it's your life. This guy got two years. Some other guys might get ten. <laughs> Well, uh, I think anybody who does this or even considers doing it is a moron, and, and they, they really need to run in the other direction. Exactly. Yeah, hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Can you blow me up? Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Carl on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello.
Hello, Carl. Thank you so much for giving me a set of balls and a spine. Thank you. Well, the reason I'm calling you is I work in the Southern California area. I work in a hospital. I'm probably going to really get it for this. Uh, and I've had multiple offers from uh, the Filipino nursing staff. 35K. Really? Yep. He said, oh, they have a friend, they have a sister, they have a grandmother. Oh, just fly over, pick them up, and they'll give them the cashola. Really? Now, now, do they offer other things, like sexual favors? Well, that was just it. I said, wait a minute, I'm a black man. <laughs> I said, 35 grand and nothing? I said, keep the money. <laughs> But then they pressure me, so I use the deal killer. I said, tell you what, I'll get married to you, but you work at the hospital, you work 12-hour shifts, you come home to a black man, Monday through Friday, three times every night. <laughs> Weekends, five times every night. <laughs> and they look at me and say, Carl, I don't want to be a citizen that bad. <laughs> That was before you gave me the tip off about the um, about the sixteen thousand per year for ten years. Yes. And after that, no, absolutely not. Yes, and that is something that's important to remind the guys about that didn't even come up in this story. Even if you don't get arrested, even if you don't get caught, let's say you marry somebody, it's a scam, and you get away with it, and let's say they. Uh, don't get a job, or let's say they have a kid, or they, they, they don't speak the language well enough, or they don't have any experience, they can't work, and they need to support themselves. They are forbidden to apply for public assistance of any kind, welfare, food stamps, anything, for 10 years. And when you sign on their behalf and vouch for them to become citizens, like, for example, if you marry them, uh, one of the things you sign in the paperwork says that you'll be liable for up to $16,000 a year uh, to pay for the cost of public assistance should they need it. A total potential liability of $160,000. And fellas, the nookie ain't that good. No. Oh, believe me, and it's going to stop the minute they get what they want. <laughs> you know it, Tom. That's right. Say, Tom, could you take me out? I got a new one for you. Kate Faber style. Kate Faber style. That's... That is a Kobe Bryant and a cash register. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. We could do Kobe style and a cash register. We could do that. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Bill on the Tom Likas Show. Bill. All right, we'll go looking for Bill and say hi to Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Yeah, what's going on, brother? How uh, much, Scott? Oh, so I just was listening to your... I, I'm actually working right now, and I tuned in, and I was just listening to you talking about People moving and getting married for green cards, and I was living with this girl for about a year and a half, you know. I mean, she came here, it started off on like a like a school visa, I'm guessing. Right. And uh, she ended up, uh, you know, just never wanting to get a job, you know, always just bringing random dudes home from the bar, freeloading, seeing what she could suck out of them. And they actually sent her a bunch of letters and paperwork saying that they were going to deport her and i was like well you know there's nothing i can do you know because she even brought it up to me and she's like you know i'd give you 10 15 grand and uh actually another one of my good buddies ended up marrying her and he got 25 wow so it just uh it just shows you man money definitely uh can cause uh definitely can take you where you need to be but these guys absolutely don't know the risks they don't no, know what the risks are. Who would do that for $25,000 if they knew they could be liable for $160,000 down the line? It ain't worth two years in jail, I can tell you that much. How many of these guys ever bother to negotiate a prenuptial <laughs> agreement, which, by the way, costs about $5,000 to do, right? Well, like, he didn't even do it smart at all. Like, he pretty much was like, really, you want to get married? She was like, yeah. She's like, I'm going to give you the cash. She's like, show me the money. She went to the bank, pulled the money out, and they went straight to the courthouse and got it done. 
But uh, the only thing that's, like, bad about it is, like, because, you know, like, those organizations that everybody goes through for that, I mean, he has to live with this girl for, like, a year. Like, they come in and question him, like, every other month and make sure, like, it's legit. It's just too much heartache. I love the the ladies too much. It's well, like now, he would be, and I'm not recommending that anybody do this <laughs> because it would be wrong. For sure. But, but let, I, I could imagine a scenario. Let, let, let's just imagine this scenario, which would be just so wrong for anybody to try to do this. <sighs> let's say a really hot chick who's been uh, allowing you to bone her. Let's say she asks you to marry her for money. Would I do it? No, no, no. I'm just giving you a scenario. Okay. Okay, okay. So here's the deal. She asks you to marry her, just like, just like the example you gave me. He yeah. said, show me the money. She went to the bank, took the money out. They went down to the courthouse. Yeah. What was stopping him the next day from going to an attorney and getting the marriage annulled? Uh, you know what? It's probably just being young. But here's it's why it's the perfect crime. And again, I would not recommend that people commit crimes. It would be wrong. Here's why it's the perfect crime. Because what's she going to do? Call the police? No, absolutely not. I it's took $25,000 out for a green card marriage, <laughs> and he got the marriage, and no, I want my money back. Yeah, that's what I would have done. That would have been the smart move, because, yeah, take the money and run. You know how it is. I mean, you could you could get that marriage annulled and then refuse to go to the INS. <laughs> for sure. Tom, thank you so much for your time, man. Take me out of the bong rip. I certainly can. I would hate to see that happen. Imagine some poor young girl who wants to become a citizen and you took fifteen, twenty five, fifty thousand dollars from her in cash without any written agreement. You married her and then uh without even without her knowledge you went and got it annulled. Like the next day. And so when the INS uh, appointment is you just say, I'm not married to you, I'm not going with you to the INS. So sue me. Now, for an unscrupulous individual who'd be doing what I would not recommend they do, that would be a great way to get big money and then not have to pay off on it. That's like stealing somebody's marijuana. What are you going to do, call 911? Of course, we've read stories of idiots who have called 911 about that. <laughs> but what are you going to do? He promised to get married in a scam marriage so I could get a green card. And I gave him fifty thousand dollars, and then he annulled the marriage. I want my fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> it's the perfect crime, which I would not recommend you commit. But uh, all these guys calling in telling me they've gotten offers. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the bad part of that whole thing is when you stay married and go to the INS and start misrepresenting yourself. Oh, yes, it's a real marriage. I mean, you could keep the money and just, just get divorced. I'm getting on Craigslist tonight. <laughs> See who wants to get married. Make sure I bone them first. <laughs> then they get the boning of a lifetime later on. <laughs> I like that. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dan. Hey, how's it going? Great. Uh, just calling in and uh, wanted to let you know that I've, I've been there, done that. And uh, not only have I done that, but I actually ended up with this chick. So, uh, how long did it take uh, for you to convince her to let you bone her? Uh, that happened after about, well, when we first did everything, we signed, you know, papers, and I didn't see her for about a year after that. After that year, when we came back in contact, it happened. Really? It was on. Wow. How was that? Fantastic. Best thing that's ever happened to me. I so, would have never so, met this chick otherwise. So, so now you're married. Engaged. 
Well, I thought you I thought you got married and then didn't see each other for a year. Well, officially married, but now you're going to have a big ceremony and actually say, you know what, we're really doing it this time. Right. Oh boy. Right. So it worked out good for us. Um, I was a little bit uh, worried about it at the beginning, but worked out in the end. She's a cool chick. Well. I certainly wouldn't recommend that to others either. Like it. Like 1 800 5800 Town. Like 1 800 5800 866. I've been listening to you since I was four years old. You're like a third parent to me. It's the Tom Like It Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Like It Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. In case you're just tuning in, we have the story of the moron who went to Craigslist and found a Russian woman who offered up to fifteen thousand dollars for what she called a green card wedding. He took her up on it, and now he's heading to the federal slammer. Right here in L.A. That's right. Idiot. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Craig on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Craig. Hi. Um, I actually just turned on my radio uh, about 15 minutes ago or so, and I thought this was a pretty funny topic. Um, basically, the story is, is uh, my buddy about two or three years ago, uh, I'm in San Clemente, but he lives in Newport. Um, he married either a, a Brazilian or an Argentine woman. Um, the next day, and she gave him twelve grand, and she bought like a little cheesy ring and everything. And the next day, he went and got an uh, annulment, and actually called Dianess and said that he that she fled out on him, and that he was all heartbroken. <laughs> and he said that there's they didn't live together, but they were scheduled, you know, to move in with each other and you know be all happy and BS. But um, yeah, he uh, basically took the money that's and that's never saw her again that is amazingly cold and heartless that and i'm admiring it very much i know at, at the time like everybody so wait, let's review he, that, like, wow. by the way had he boned this chick um i believe so um they don't they lived in the same complex area right and they always went to bars and hanging out and right. I, I think he did a couple times but no connection like you know sex for marriage right but eventually she brought it up because they're um, telling her that, you know, either you, you got to go home. So uh, so, so he took it, he took the perfect crime to the ultimate level, to the nth degree, because oh, yeah. he not only took the 15,000 no, and then or 12,000, then got it annulled. But then he calls so that she can't sue him or anything. He calls the INS and what had her deported, essentially. Uh Pretty much. I mean, he never said it, saw her after that, but he basically called up saying, oh, oh my gosh, uh, I loved her so much, and she just used me for a green card and blah, blah, blah. And we were supposed to, I was supposed to go over and help her move in, but her apartment was cleared out, and she's gone. I don't know what to do. So, yeah, that, it, every, <laughs> all of his friends were like, that was pretty, you know, messed up. But I wonder if anybody out there thinks that's mean. Oh, I'm sure you'll get at least one happy customer. There's got to be, I'll, I, I, if nothing else, there's got to be an illegal alien out there who listens, who is just horrified by hearing that story. Yeah. But uh, love your show, Tom. Can you take me out old, old school? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Roger on the Tom Likes Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Pretty well. Um, listen here. I've been listening to your show. I really like it. And uh, you know, I hear about all these guys that are getting paid for these chicks to come out here and marry them. Um, but what about the girls that just come out here and uh, you know just want to get married and settle down and aren't looking for uh, you know paying any money you know it's it's more about uh they like you or something why would you want to get married yeah that's a good question um 
But uh, maybe because that's the reason, the only reason this person would want to move out to the, you know, to where I'm at. You yeah, know? but uh, think about it. Uh, you know, people can get away with uh, the visa thing for about two years, I think, or maybe a little more. Uh-huh. You know, they get, like every six months they need to renew their visa, which means they have to leave the country. Uh-huh. Uh, like maybe go back to their own country, get their uh, passport stamped again, then come back in. And they, they can do that for a couple of years. And uh-huh. then at some point, if, uh, you know, let's say it's two years and they decide, oh, I want to marry you. Uh, that's about the time you're getting bored with the relationship anyway. I mean, what a perfect, uh, again, talk about a perfect crime, the ability to say, well, um, you know, the government says you've got to go, and uh, <laughs> and me, I don't believe in marriage, so uh, I don't know what else we can do. Uh, that makes perfect sense, Tom. It does make perfect sense. So I never thought of it that way. I appreciate you helping me out with that. It's it, it's it's the perfect uh, perfect excuse. It's just like you know, I, I gays and lesbians want to get married. They want the right to get married, and I say gays and lesbians should have the same rights as everybody. But like, imagine being gay. Imagine your the, your significant other comes to you and wants a commitment for you, and you say, "Well, I'm sorry, but <laughs> but we're not allowed to get married. It's illegal." Yeah, you know, I I, I messed up one time. I uh, was living in Vegas and just dating abroad out here in L.A. and she got pregnant, and uh, I moved back out here, and it didn't work out. And you know, it's just these games they play these these women, you know. I want the government to take away the right of straight people to get married. You know, uh... <laughs> oh, honey, I'd love to marry you, but guess what? Uh, they made it illegal. You know, she turned around and she wanted me not to be in the picture, and she wanted uh, my kid's stepdad to be the father and wanted him to adopt my kid. What do you think of that? <laughs> Come on, Roger. I'm serious. Can you believe that? <laughs> Hardly. I swear, man, I swear. But you know what? I want to let it happen. I love my kid too much. Uh, you understand. Oh, boy. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jose is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat of the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello there, superstar. Hello there, Jose. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Gotta tell you, I'm having a lot of fun here listening to you and listening to all these guys calling in and uh, uh, sharing their experiences uh, with all of your audience. But I wanted to, uh, what prompted me to call you, Tom, uh, is the fact that uh, I am a green card holder myself. In fact, I just got my, my permanent, permanent green card yesterday. Congratulations. And I got it through marriage. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you actually in love with the person or what? Yes, 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 yes. So oh, okay. my marriage is legit, but I wanted to call in and clarify a few of the mistakes that I've heard since I started listening to, uh, to the show. Tell us. I got of, pardon me? Tell us. Tell us all about it. Yeah, well, uh, there's a, a few things. For example, uh, you were talking about this, uh, the fact that the Amer- American citizen has to support the immigrant for 10 years. Has to, is- has to agree in the case of that person asking for public assistance uh, to pay up yeah. to $16,000 a year. Oh, but you said for 10 years, is that correct? For a period of 10 years. Because yeah. because uh, uh, someone coming to this country and marrying in uh, is forbidden by laws made in the last 10 years, 15 years or so, uh, for applying to, uh, for welfare or food stamps. That is correct, but it, it is partially correct. Let me tell you, the way I read this, because I did a lot of reading, of course. I filed so much paperwork, and there is a lot of paperwork involved with this process. Uh, in this case, my wife, who is the American citizen, had to sign an aff- she had to uh, work an affidavit in which she uh, basically told the U.S. government, "Look, I'm going to be responsible for this person until this person is legally able to work and and basically provide to our to our society as a husband and a wife." And now that I have my permanent, permanent green card, that's no longer the case. So now, even if we ever get divorced, she's no longer responsible for me legally anymore. Interesting, because, I, but again, fortunately, I haven't, uh, I haven't been down this road myself, although I've had, uh, I've been asked to do this. 
But uh, I know a lot of people who have because I've dated many women from other countries. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what I've been told. No, there is actually uh, there are two types of green cards. The first one is a two-year temporary green card, which is used by the Department of Homeland Security, which is USCIS, because INS no longer exists as a government entity. I see. Uh, they were terminated back in uh, 2001. Actually, 2002, I'm sorry. Well, there, there, there is an INS, and there is an office downtown for the INS, although the INS is now a division of the Department of Homeland Security, I believe. Correct, C correct. But now there's no, there's no government page for INS at all. If you try to go to, go to find any type of immigration information, you have to go through USCIS, yes. not INS anymore. Right. And, uh, but I can tell you that, so the two, you get a green card for two years, then... Uh, you have to, uh, the, the government wants to ver verify that you're still legally married to this person. And, and they do ask for some proof, like you were saying, they want to see some pictures occasionally, they want to see some bank statements. But uh, after that, uh, once you clear that step, they send you a green card for 10 years, which is a permanent green card. That means once that one expires, they'll give you another one automatically. You, all you have to do is file the paper. You don't even have to, basically right now, today, I can legally divorce my wife. And I will still be uh, eligible to get another green card when this one expires. Not only that, I can apply for citizenship legally after I accumulate five years of having my legal residency. Without her? Without her. That is wow. Her. So it's only two years. So only two years. It's not true that you have to put up with this person for many, many years. Not true. Only two years until you clear your permanent, permanent, uh, green card. But, the but then again, if, if you're a man and you are, you're an American citizen and you're marrying a woman, uh, you are running the risk of uh, of divorce because uh, of the amount that we have to pay women. Uh, uh, you could, uh, but let's say you were married to an illegal alien who, uh, or you got married to an illegal alien who was becoming legal because you married her. Yes. Um, let's say you stay with her for two years. And then she got her green card and divorced you. Uh, you could very well end up having to pay her half of everything you earned for those two years. That is true. That is true. That's why I would not recommend this to anybody unless, I mean, I just cannot even think of an exception unless it's somebody that you know very well is a very, very close friend. But it, it, it is true that what, you, what you're saying is just way too much to risk. Right. Um, yeah, and not only that, the, really the... Legal ramifications are just tremendous. The the government the, the government has severe penalties for this type of fraud. I think up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars fine, and not only that, also also five five to ten years of prison. It is a felony if you get caught. Well, they the say that, but this as you saw with this guy, he got two months. I gotta tell you this, Tom. I get the 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 interview process was the most painful thing I've ever it's done. It's brutal from what I understand. Wife. Yeah. My wife got out of there crying. Uh, it was it was it was just I Because was they treat you like a criminal. They treat you like like crap, seriously. They yeah. treat you and and I gotta tell you, I'm a professional. I graduate I'm an engineer. I graduated from a very prestigious school and I when I went in there I already had a job with a very big company. Uh was very well dressed on a suit, my wife is also a professional, and they treated us like second-level citizens, like crap. Oh. In there. What country are you from, Jose? I am from Colombia. I see. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, that was one of the most traumatic experiences, especially for my wife. I, I, I felt terribly, I, I felt so bad for her, seriously, because if I had to go through that crap on my own, that's fine. I can put up with it, but the fact that she had to go through it, made, made me feel pretty bad, and uh, uh, it was it was quite traumatic. I got to tell you, this person... I don't know if uh, this this uh, officer is like that with everybody, or there are more people. I imagine there has to be more people like that, but they treat you like they don't care, and basically they assume that everybody that comes through that door is trying to pull a fast one on the U.S. government. So I would ne that's one of the reasons I would not recommend for anybody to go through something like that. Nah, I wouldn't recommend it either. Jose, gotta run. Thanks a lot for the call. The Tom Likas Show.